that's what's more fun for me. I like. spent most of my life as an Nobody plays that guy in a movie better than John C. Riley. Famously known for his multi-dimensional everyman characters, throughout his career he has built up a long list of memorable supporting roles. But it's the versatility of his craft that sets him apart, alternating between comedic and dramatic hats where he sees fit. Growing up in a working class neighbourhood on Chicago's South Side, John became interested in theatre early on debuting in his first stage production at age eight. Utilising his city's unusual fertile theatre scene, in 1987, John was asked to join the prestigious Steppenwolf Theatre Company. John's film break came from accepting a minor role as a Vietnam War soldier in Casualties of War. Once on set, Riley was immediately bumped up to a supporting role after director Brian De Palma and Sean Penn noticed his stage quality. This film would unwittingly launch his future both professionally and personally as he met his wife, Alison Dickey, on set, who was Sean Penn's assistant at the time. John hit the 90s with some stellar supporting parts, balancing out all-star casts with his real and relatable characters. Boogie Nights was a standout film for the cinema world because of its complex characters and controversial insight into the world of pornography. His portrayal of Reed Rothschild, Dirk Diggler's impromptu sidekick, was pure gold and helped make this film a classic. Reed Rothschild is, um, he is, uh, well, he introduces Dirk Diggler into the world of Boogie Nights. He's his first friend, uh, aside from Jack Horner, the character that Burt Reynolds plays. This is a really daring script and, you know, it's pretty stunning. The first time you read it, you can't, can't even believe what you're reading. And John would follow up this daring script with another Paul Thomas Anderson film, Magnolia. Often credited as one of the finest acting performances, John embodied the down-and-out loner Jim Curring flawlessly. I'm used to spending much more time in a film, and in this one I'm kind of coming in and out, in and out, in and out over a period of weeks. And, uh, and it wasn't until I saw an assembly of a lot of the stuff that had been filmed before I started that I realized how the film really will soar, you know? This feeling of momentum and suspense and like something terrible is about to happen and just, it's the perfect kind of millennial movie, I think. Moving into the new millennium, John featured in some huge movies, getting thoroughly soaked in the perfect storm, wasting time in a loveless marriage with the hours, and flying high with Leonardo in The Aviator. And with all that experience he was collecting, it was none other than Martin Scorsese, director of Gangs of New York, that taught Riley some lessons. One of the wonderful things about Mr. Scorsese is that he just, he just, he, he, he feels like he's got the best job in the world and he, and he enjoys it, he enjoys coming here every day and that enthusiasm is really infectious, you know? And not to say that he doesn't have to deal with all the, reg all the usual struggles of making a film, but um, he just loves it so much. It, it made me realise, like, oh, that, that's what it's all about, you know? After many supporting parts, John deserved a lead role. And so with smooth, confident bravado, he took on the role of a precise con man in Criminal. His co-star Maggie Gyllenhaal praised his work, really enjoying the contrast of this character to his previous work. You know, John C. Riley, who, you know, I feel like I've seen often play someone who's like kind of gets duped. You know, playing someone who is using all of their energy to get one over on everybody else. I mean, that's kind of, that's interesting casting, I think. John successfully broke his mold in Criminal, but he still had a few more tricks up his sleeve. Riley has a surprisingly wonderful singing voice, which he mastered on stage growing up in the Windy City. So ironically, John revealed his vocal talent singing up a storm in the lively musical Chicago. I think in these times of, of crisis, people, people, more than they just, it's not so much that they just want to forget about the world and if they just, people want to be encouraged to have hope. And musicals are full of hope, you know? It's just something really pure about someone singing and telling a story by singing and, I don't know, I really love musicals and it feels like coming home to me. It feels like coming back to my childhood. 
to me because that's that's how I learned to be an actor was through musicals. Chicago earned this surprising singer an Oscar nomination for his interpretation of the betrayed husband Amos Hart. The experience reminded John how at home he feels making a musical and soon enough he was back working out the vocal cords in front of a live audience in a prairie home companion. Well, People tend to think, you know, like, if you pre-record the music like I did for the film Chicago, that that is somehow easier uh, than, or, yeah, that, that, that that's easier than performing live. But, I, in fact, it comes with its own set of challenges, you know, lip-syncing to a performance that you gave three months previous in a studio while on stage with a camera in front of you, you know, trying to get the, the lip-syncing right and all that. And it's kind of this disembodied kind of strange feeling trying to recreate that energy that you created in the in the audio recording so I actually was thrilled to be able to do the music live it makes my job a lot simpler you know the moment when I'm performing the song is the moment when the song's being recorded and that's that you know now audiences were aware of his musical prowess and push on for comedy but it would be Judd Apatow who would successfully marry the two John won his first billing for the riotous rock biopic parody, Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. This comedy chronicled the life of a fictional singer through decades of musical trends. So much so, he became Rocker Cox even after the cameras stopped rolling. Cox, America's in love with Dewey Cox because I changed their lives. You know, from their eardrums to their sex organs. I moved them, you know. Once they got Cox in their ears, they can't shake it. Oh, man, I love to shake my hair like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> calm down now, darling. See, she's still inside audition, still trying to get inside. Well, I mean, we picked John because he can sing. He's hilarious. And, uh, you know, this is a guy who's nominated for an Academy Award. If we didn't put him in this movie making fun of biopics, he would have made a real one. So in a way, I was just saving him from doing one of these. After his parody performance, there wasn't going to be a biopic script in the mail anytime soon. However, there was a Judd Apatow classic in the pipeline that saw him paired with Will Ferrell in Step Brothers. Their brotherly banter and chemistry really carried the film, which glorified being middle-aged and still living at home. Sit tight. Yeah. You've got a good thing going on. If you haven't been evicted by your parents, wait it out. eat as much free food as you can and wait it out. Your moment's going to come. And the ever-versatile John continued to back up his reputation by moving from this man-child comedy role to play an intellectual father in the Roman Polanski drama Carnage. This work illuminated his skill and proved to be a perfect casting of Riley because of its themes of unveiling immaturity amongst adults. And the first, say, third of the story is very polite and everyone trying to present the best version of themselves or this ideal version of themselves in the way that parents are often competitive in that subtle way with each other, like, oh, yes, well, uh, you know, the way we raise our child is, oh, well, yes, of course, of course, us also, us also. And there are these uh, undercurrents of status competition underneath it, and there's undercurrents of judgment without seeming to judge, you know. And then, you know, one thing leads to another in the story, and needless to say, the gloves come off. And I think that if there is a moral to the story, it's that, you know, that a adults can be more childish than children. Now, John is a man that is definitely in tune with his inner child, which turned out to be a real asset while lending his distinctive voice to the main character, Ralph, in the Disney animation Wreck-It Ralph. Ralph is the bad guy character in a classic arcade game who longs to be a hero instead of a villain. This, interestingly enough, turned out to be a story Riley found quite easy to relate to. I, I found a lot to relate to in Ralph myself. And I'm not a kid, and you know, I'm not an especially avid animation fan, you know. Um, but I think you're gonna you're gonna love the journey that he goes on. And anyone who's ever played some of these older arcade games, I don't want to speak for you, but perhaps you have. Uh, I think it's going to be a really fun thing to see them come to life in a modern way. One thing is always true about John C. Riley: He is never the vanilla ingredient or straight guy in a film. His looks, skill set and demeanour have allowed him to play a vast range of unique characters. And here at Star Picks, we love his work and consider him one of the funniest, serious guys working today. 
stay tuned to Star Fix for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.